Hey there, what is up you guys? I am Jerry and welcome back to the channel, The Chicago Griller. This is the show where I share my favorite tips, tricks, and recipes for the Weber Q. If you think that I could help you out, hit that like button and subscribe. Now, before I dive into today's video, I need to say thank you, thank you, thank you to all of you out there because this channel recently crossed 1,000 subscribers here on YouTube. Now, I started this channel a few months into the pandemic as a way to teach myself some new skills, like video editing. But I also discovered it was a really fun way to spend some extra time at home learning and sharing some great recipes with all of you online. But without all your likes, comments, and overall support, I think I might have given up a long time ago. So, once again, 1,000 thanks to all of you out there. Thank you. Now, with all that said, I do have something special planned to commemorate this milestone. So come on with me and join me on the back porch because I have a surprise for you. Come on, let's go. Okay, so what do I have here? This is a Weber Char Q. It is the charcoal version of the Weber Q. If you've never seen one of these before, it's because it was discontinued in the early 2010s. I, however, managed to find this particular unit on Facebook Marketplace. It's a little bit of a fixer upper, but I figure refurbishing it or replacing the parts would be fun for the channel. That said, today I wanna to walk you through the differences between this Char Q and standard Weber Q gas grills. So let's just go dive right in. The first and most obvious similarity is the shape. It has the signature Weber Q shape. It's shaped kind of like an American football. It also features two halves, the top half being a cast aluminum lid and the bottom half being the cook box. You'll also see that beneath the grill, there is a pull-out ashtray. However, this is where the similarities end and the differences begin. Although the drip tray does pull out under the char Q, it also doubles as an ashtray. Now, speaking of differences, let's touch on the very obvious differences between the char Q and standard gas grills. Naturally, you won't find a gas control valve on the char Q. Instead, you'll find a pair of air dampers that help control airflow and thus control the amount of heat that lets into the grill. Open to let in more air and more heat, close to lower the airflow and thus lower the heat. Now, of course, as I show you this lower damper, you'll notice the next difference, and that is there is no burner tube inside this cook box. Of course, why would there be? This is a charcoal grill. So of course, instead of a burner tube, there is a charcoal grate that sits inside this cook box. Now this particular char Q has probably sat a good chunk of its life out in the elements, so this charcoal grate is pretty rusted out. It feels solid, but I wasn't able to scrub this rust off with just some household cleaners. I'll probably have to get industrial if I really want to clean this thoroughly. So instead, as a workaround, I purchased this PK Grills grate that seems to fit perfectly inside the cook box. It doesn't quite have as much surface area as the original Weber brand, but that's okay because I think I'm gonna primarily use this grill for indirect grilling or reverse searing. So I don't need full grill coverage with my charcoal. Moving along, you'll also see that the grates of the Weber Char Q are slightly different from the regular Weber Q. The Char Q is the exact same size as the Weber Q 2000 or Weber Q 2200. So those grill grates will fit inside the Char Q, as you can see in the side by side. But side by side, you can see some notable differences, namely the lack of a flavorizer bar that protects the burner tube because there is no burner tube to protect in the Weber Char Q. That said, performance should be roughly identical. These original Char Q grates seem pretty rusted out, and just like the charcoal grate, I was unable to scrub the rust clean with some household cleaners, so I think in the interim, I'm just gonna use my Q2000 grates on this Char Q whenever I wanna cook. 
There are a couple of final differences between the Weber Char Q and the Weber Q gas grills that I need to point out. First off is the side of these lids. If you look at the sides of the Char Q, the lid is completely flush with the body. This is so that air doesn't escape out the sides. However, on the gas grills, there is a little bit of a gap to allow some of the propane and fumes and gas to get out. The last difference that I want to point out is mostly cosmetic. And if you look here on the side of my char there is a hole where the ignition button should be on a regular grill. There is no ignition button on the char You light up a charcoal chimney and dump the coals out when they're hot. So that's a quick little rundown on the similarities and differences between this char and the standard Weber Q gas grill. So let's go grab some coals and take this unit out for my very first cook. So for my inaugural charcoal cook, I have filled up a compact chimney full of briquettes. To get this thing going, I'm gonna light a couple of wax cubes. As I light these cubes, I wanna point out a couple of safety tips. First, I have placed my grill away from the wooden railings. And second, I have turned the grill so that it is against the wind. Once my wax cubes are lit, I'm gonna place my chimney back onto this charcoal grate. You can see it is already smoking, but it'll take about 15 minutes to fully heat up. You know your coals are ready when you can see a little bit of flames coming out of the top of your chimney. And when that happens, you can just go ahead and dump your coals directly onto your charcoal grate. Then using a clean pair of tongs, arrange the charcoal in a single layer on your charcoal grate. Now this next step is optional, but I'm gonna lay down some pecan wood chips on my charcoal. This should infuse some smoke into my cook. In the future though, I think I'm gonna use wood chunks because I can already tell these are gonna burn up a little bit too fast. And see, what did I tell you? They're burning up already. Anyways, let me get my grates installed now. And with both of my dampers fully wide open, I'm gonna go ahead and shut the lid and let this grill come on up to temp. And as you can see, there is some really good smoke coming out of this grill. That said, before I could cook on it, I need to scrape these grill grates clean. It is the springtime here, so I sprung for a new grill brush from Shark Barbecue. And now with my grates cleaned up, I'm gonna add a light layer of oil on the surface of the grates. And now, it is time to cook. For today's inaugural cook, I decided to go with a bone-in ribeye. This steak was seasoned with McCormick Montreal steak seasoning. I've placed it directly over the coals on this rip-roaring heat, so I'll just shut the lid and let this cook. After two minutes, I am gonna give this steak a 90 degree turn. This should give it some nice crosshatch searing. Again, keeping this steak directly over the coals. I'll go ahead and shut this lid and check on it again in two more minutes. Now four minutes total have elapsed. Let's see how we did on this first side. Hmm, that is some beautiful searing. That said, this steak does seem to be cooking pretty quickly, so I think I'm only going to give this about three minutes on this second side. And so, after seven minutes of total cooking time, Let's give this steak a quick poke and finger check. This feels about medium rare, exactly what I am going for. So it's time to pull the steak off the grill and let this rest for about 10 minutes before cutting into it. And now for my next charcoal grilling safety tip, to shut this all down, I'm gonna close the lid, shut both dampers to cut off the oxygen supply to the coals and let this cool down naturally. Now. Let's head on inside and check on our steak. Okay, and here I am back inside for everybody's favorite part, the taste test. So let's see how I did. All right, check this out. I don't know if you can see this, but this is a perfect medium rare. Mm. It's really, really good. So good. Now that said, to be honest, I'm not really sure that I could tell the difference between this steak 
and one that I cook on a regular gas grill. And I think the reason might be twofold. One, I think the wood chips that I used burned up a little bit too quickly, so wood chunks would be better for next time. And two, maybe it's because the steak cooks so fast with direct heat that it doesn't have time for the smoke to infuse inside of it. So I think a very interesting experiment to try out is perhaps next time do a side-by-side -side video comparing the results of a steak cooked on a charcoal grill versus a gas grill. So I think I'll do that in one of my future videos. That said, I am pretty happy with the way my first cook on my char-Q turned out. I am looking forward to future cooks, especially ones that involve low and slow roasting techniques. I think that's where I'm really going to get the biggest benefit out of my new charcoal grill. Anyways, thank you very much as always for watching today. If you enjoyed the content of this video, as usual, hit that like button and subscribe. Thanks again for watching, stay safe, and see you all again next week. Bye now.